Over the last decade, the hike to Trolltunga has become one of the most popular one in Norway. Follow Hassan and his friends Julia and Pau on their journey to this amazing place. We will tell you everything you need to know about this impressive but very difficult hike. Trolltunga is located at the Hardangerfjord near the town of Odda. Follow road 13 from Odda direction north. In Tussedal turn right when you see the sign Trolltunga. Most people will try to park at P2 at Schegesta. We're at the Trolltunga camping park. Parking 2. We are parked there and gonna start our hike towards Tultunga. We're gonna work from, walk from uh, P2 to P3. Uh, we were a bit unfortunate uh, in not finding any uh, space for uh, parking in P3 as it only is possible through pre-booking and, and um, there are only three, <coughs> 30 uh, car spots there. So we're gonna walk from P2 to P3. At, the, at P2 there, is a, there appears to be a dam. And there's a kiosk as well. Or kiosk. On days with a lot of traffic you have to park at P1 in Tussedal. Then you can take a shuttle bus to P2. This bus also runs from Otta. If you weren't lucky to park at P3, there is another shuttle bus which runs from P2 to P3 at Mogalitop. So you avoid a 4 km long hike which goes 300 meters up. This is quite substantial and will save a lot of time if you take it both way. While Hassan and his friend hike to P3, some more information about the hike. The total distance is 29 km with a total ascent of 1700 m from P2 at Czechesta and back. You have to calculate 10 hours for the hike and between 12 and 13 hours total time with break and photo session, especially if there is a long queue at Trolltunga. Due to that we have no other choice than to give our black very difficult label. The season is between June and the end of September or early October, depending on the year. Especially at the end of the season you will have to start early as you don't want to finish the hike in the dark. This road is new, it was only open in 2014. Previously there was a funicular which went up but it was closed due to safety reason in 2012. After one hour, Hassan and his friend reach Mogali Top. We finally are done with the P2, the P3 path, and now it's uh, the actual hike started. The parking goes all the way from here. People parking from there can access the route from another path, I think. As we gave a black label, the hike should only be done by experienced hikers which are in very good shape. If you are not sure, we strongly recommend contacting one of the many guiding companies. Do not even consider going outside the summer season alone. Let's formulate it at extreme. There are easier methods to commit suicide. We mention that because we have seen tons of requests for advice on Facebook groups about that topic especially because the guide tour was too expensive. After a short flat section, the path starts to climb to Gritteskar. This is the most difficult section on the hike. At 7 kilometers we approach this lake. This is halfway to Trolltunga and a, and a fourth of the total hike. Mm, at six kilometers we see some tents being set up. Six kilometers to go. Of course there is uh, another camping space uh, up ahead. 
The region before Sturenfloren is popular among campers. At Sturenfloren there is an emergency shelter. About five kilometers we have a survival cabin. I think, I think you can stay during the dangerous times. It's, well, it's a very good cabin. <laughs> yeah. It is for use in case of sunstorm or other emergency. It contains sleeping bag, blankets and food ration. It is not meant to be used otherwise, like regular camping. Afterwards the pass goes again quite steep up. Then you reach the plateau Hesteflorne. That means where the horse are grazing. At that point the major climbs are done, but it still goes up and down for the next 5 kilometers. From there you have a nice view of Ringendals Vatne, the lake at the bottom of the valley. Incredible views at about 4.5 kilometers. Last year I had lunch here. <laughs> Just to note, it was amazing. I can't believe people are not queuing up to take pictures here. Uh, today is Saturday, by the way, so it's going to be a lot of people queuing up. I expect. I don't know if you can see, but there are a lot of people on the path. Personally, it's by far the most uh, crowded uh, hike I've ever been. I heard uh, Prakasturan is more crowd, uh, crowdy than this, but uh, I haven't been on that one yet. Yes, Prakasturan is way more crowded, but also much easier. Hazan would get bored on the hike there. You should stay on the trail to avoid excessive erosion of the area. Use the bridges even if the river below is dry. After Hesteflorene, the pass turns slightly left and you climb towards Edernut. There is also an emergency shelter at Edernut. It's not directly by the pass. About a kilometer before Troltunga you pass a lake. In ancient days there was a river flowing out which fed the waterfall Tüsse Trägerne. This was a huge waterfall of a total of 632 meters in height, with a single drop of 312 meters. That's nearly twice the height of the famous Wöhringsfossen. In 1962 the water was diverted into a tunnel to be used to the power plant Tussot 2. Previously it was a well-known tourist attraction. So Hassan and his friend reached Trolltunga. So we finally arrived after 4 hours and 15 minutes. Finally arrived to this place. If you want to take a picture on the stone formation, you might end up waiting several hours. Remember that you need to leave early enough so you don't arrive after it gets dark or you have to camp somewhere. Also, be careful when adventuring on the tongue. People have fallen down while taking pictures and died. We hope this video was useful and you will have a safe trip up Trolltunga. If you find out that Trolltunga might be too difficult for you, then check our other hiking videos like the one about Bessegen or if you want something easier, maybe Preike stolen. Check yeah, out our good. Facebook or Instagram to have some hints yeah. what will come next.